Hi everyone, it's Shayna. This is going to be just a 40 minute slow flow. Um, you can notice I'm wearing my sweatshirt. It's a little chilly in the studio today, so um, I'm not worried. I know that I will warm up as soon as we start moving together. So if you have not practiced hot slow flow here at the studio or if you've never taken slow flow anywhere else, um, really the goal is to get you to move very intentionally, very slowly, using your muscles rather than momentum to pull you in and out of each of the asanas. So take your time. There are going to be moments where you want to move faster than I am cueing you to move, and postures which usually feel like they are transitional postures, and we're going to really lean into them and enjoy those postures on their own. So um, having said that, Take any modifications that are appropriate for your body if you want to. I have a block here. I love practicing with a block. So if you have something at your house that can work as a block or a block, you know, a water bottle. I also got the water bottle here. Um, and also honor your body. Listen to how you're feeling today. Maybe it's been a while since you practiced, so it might not feel as good to move with the same level of intensity that you So just be sure you're taking care of yourselves. So we're going to start in that comfortable seated position. You can sit cross-legged or you can sit into your heels. Great. If you want to bring that block underneath your hips, you're more than welcome to. If you want to pull one of your feet up on top of your thigh, you might. It's pretty early in your practice, so just be gentle with your knees. And then just allow yourself to settle in. Close your eyes. Find a resting place for your hands. It can be on your knees, your hands might be in your lap, palms up, palms down, whatever is speaking to you today. And then just kind of explore your body. Notice where you are holding tension. It might be in through your hips, your shoulders. Try to unhinge that jaw, like clench it up, but just kind of let it hang heavy. And furrow your brow. here just to notice what's going on in your body. So notice where your breath is kind of hanging out. Most of the time our breath is pretty shallow. So just gradually begin to increase the length of your inhales and exhales, drawing that breath a little bit deeper in each and every inhale. Focusing on creating a little more length in through your spine, reaching the crown of your head up. Sometimes when we create that length, our shoulders want to inch up towards the ears, so maybe pull your shoulders up to your ears and then actively round those shoulder heads down and back. Wherever you are in your breath cycle, go ahead and press all of the air completely out of your lungs. Through your nose, breathe in, dragging the air across the back of your throat, finding that constriction in through your throat. Pause at the top, open your mouth, and exhale. Through your nose, breathe in. Through your mouth, H-A, exhale. Now, so your lips breathe in through your nose, dragging the air across the back of your throat, finding that ujjayi breath. And through your nose, ujjayi exhale. Find a few more rounds of these breaths here on your own. sitting here breathing, maybe allowing your mind to find an intention or dedication for your practice, anything that um, just naturally comes to your mind. It might be a person you want to send some love and light and energy to. Maybe today it's good enough just to focus on your breath for 40 minutes and let everything else just kind of sink away.
continue seated forward fold. Please plant your hands out in front of you and walk your hands beyond your mat. And depending on how long it's been since you practiced and what you've done today, those hips might feel tight. So just give them a little time to loosen up. If you have that block, you can bring a block and rest your forehead on the block. You can make fists with your hands or maybe after a few breaths, maybe you can allow your forehead to rest gently on the mat. Be mindful here to keep your breath active. Nice full inhales and exhales, warming that body up from the inside out. Free to keep your eyes closed. We're just going to rise up and switch out the cross of your feet. And because this isn't the natural way that you cross your legs, this might, side might feel a little tighter, have a little more tension to this. That's okay. We're going to walk those hands once more out in front of you. And then just notice any asymmetries in your body. Send some breath into the places that need to have a little love. Being intentional with pressing those sit bones down into the mat. We're going to inhale back up. Plant your hands on the mat. We're going to roll over your knees and come into a tabletop position. So stack your shoulders right over your wrists, hips right over your knees. Spread your fingers really wide. And then as you inhale, drop your belly, open up the front side of your body, tilt your chin up. This is your cow pausing here for a breath. To really flare those sit bones, open your collarbones, gentle bend in your elbows, bringing some weight into your fingertips and out of your wrists. Take another breath. And then as you exhale, you're going to hollow out your core, tuck your chin, finding that cat posture, and pause from here to really send the back of your heart up, breathe into your kidneys. Now we're going to move with our breath. Inhale to cow. And then exhale to cow. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Finding three more rounds on your own, or if you want to come into any organic child's pose, or even just leaning into your side bodies, go for it. And then after your third exhale, coming into your neutral tabletop position. tabletop, walk your hands two or three inches out in front of your shoulders, curl your toes under, and then lift your hips, downward facing dog. Pedal out your feet slowly, remember moving with intention, taking your time, and then find stillness. Everybody look at your hands, make sure your fingertips and your knuckles, all of your hands are touching the mat, so you don't want to have space underneath your knuckles, you want to grip the mat with your knuckles, take some of that weight out of your wrists. Wrap your shoulder head, lift your sit bones high, and push your belly back to your thigh. Squeeze your insides towards the back of the room. Try to inch those heels a little bit closer to the mat. We're going to step your right foot to the left back corner of the mat. Kick through your heel, and then just really lean into this. You might even look underneath your right tricep. Coming back to your downward facing dog, we're just going to do that on the other side. Left foot, the ball of your foot to the back right corner. Kick, breathe, maybe twist it a little, looking underneath that left shoulder. Coming back to your downward facing dog, bend your knees, look beyond your mat, step your feet behind your wrists, ragdoll each mouse in a forward fold. Soften your knees a lot, maybe even let your belly rest on your thighs, grab opposite elbows if that feels good. You can sway gently side to side if you like. You can interlace your hands behind your head if you prefer. There are lots of options for this first forward fold, so just find the one that is appealing to you. Releasing any binds you have. You can practice with your feet hip with distance apart. That is a great option if you have knee issues or if you have low back strain or if you just prefer it. Your other option, of course, is to bring those big toes together. Inhale, halfway lift. So we're going to hold on this halfway lift and really focus 
focus on shifting the weight into the pads of your feet. Pull the crown of your head forward. And then really engage your bondas. So move a bonded up pelvic floor engagement. You have eight muscles between your hips. Try to pull them all in and up. And then Uniyana Bandha, lifting your belly button up and in towards your rib cage. Take another breath. And then exhale, deep forward fold. You can either grab behind your calves if you like, or you can push your hands into the mat on either side of your feet. And then we're going to inhale, halfway lift. Find that nice long neutral spine, flare your sit bones up. Exhale, deep forward fold. Soften your knees. Engage your core. We're going to root down and rise all the way up into your mountain pose, Tadasana. From Tadasana, cactus your arms, lift your heart, and find your back bend. Inhale, back up to mountain. And then as you exhale, we're going to slowly swan dive all the way down. From here, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to a high plank position. From your high plank, tuck your hips underneath you. Re-engage those bondages. Each and every time you come to our plank, I'm going to remind you. Shift the weight forward, and then drop your knees if you like, or you can keep your knees lifted. We're going to lower all the way down, pinning your elbows into the sides. Drag your heels with your hands back towards your bottom set of ribs. Push your toenails into the mat, and then find a low cobra, Bhujangasana. Engage the muscles in your back. Drag your heart forward. Push those toenails down. Take another breath. As you exhale, we're going to tap your chin, push your hands to the mat, scoop your hip bones underneath you, use your knees as much as you like or need, press back up into your high plank, breathe in your high plank, in, and then lift your hips, downward facing dog, as you exhale. Take an inhale, and exhale. Inhale, bend your knees, look beyond your mat. Exhale, step or lightly float, depending on your practice. Halfway lift. And then exhale, deep forward fold. Soften your knees. Root down, rise all the way up, mountain pose, Tadasana. Circle sweep your arms overhead. And then exhale, cactus your arms. Back bend. Maybe a little more dip. Inhale up. And then exhale, swan dive, using your entire exhale to bring you down, finding that nice wide rotation through your shoulders if it's safe for your shoulders. Inhale, halfway lift, flare those sit bones, stretch out those hamstrings. Exhale, plant your hands, high plank. Tuck your hips, engage your bondage, shift the weight forward, chaturanga just halfway. Pin your elbows in, pause, breathe, three, two, one. Inhale, upward facing dog. Pause in your up dog, enjoying this up dog. Draw your shoulders down away from your ears. If it feels good, you might lift to your chin, lift to your gaze. Try to keep your quads engaged so your knees are lifted. Keep your core active, keep dragging those hips forward. Take another breath, push them out away. And then we're gonna use that strong core to pull your hips slowly back, downward facing dog. And then just breathe here. So those are two variations for your vinyasa. You are more than welcome to add extra push-ups anytime you want, as long as they are slow and intentional. Your other option, of course, is to skip it all together and go straight to the downward facing dog. Inhale, bend your knees, look beyond your mat. Exhale, travel step or lightly float. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain. And then exhale, back bend. Inhale, up to mountain. We're going to sit down in Utkatasana chair pose. So drop your hips way back. You want to shift the weight back in your heels. Sit down nice and low. And all of our knees are different. So if it's more appropriate for you to separate your feet and have them hip width distance apart, that is a great option. Again, shoulders you can modify by bringing your hands to heart center. As long as you are pushing something precious, between your hands, like you don't want to drop it, keep that upper body active, or your other option is to reach your arms straight forward. So find some depth here, your depth today. So fire up that Ujjayi breath. Take another inhale. Forward fold as you exhale. 
Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, high plank. From your high plank, tucking your hips underneath you, engaging your bondage, shift the weight forward, chaturanga for three, two, one. Inhale, up dog or low cobra. Breathing here, opening through your heart, pushing them out of way, squeeze your glutes, and then pull your belly and your hips back, downward facing dog. Inhale, send your right leg high. So start with neutral hips. Try to kick that heel straight up. Keep that left leg nice and strong. Kick up, 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 up. And then bend your knees, stack your hip, scorpion dog. Try to balance the weight between your hands. And if you want, go some nice, big, slow, intentional circles. Kick that right knee. And switch directions. Straighten out your leg. Square out your hips. We're going to rock into plank, knee to nose. Hollow out that core. See if you can make contact. And then inhale, right leg high. Lengthen that leg. Lift it up a little bit more. We're going to shift into plank and tap your right tricep. Inhale, send your right leg high. Lengthen, lift, shift it forward, tap the left. Inhale, right leg high. Lengthen, lift all the way up, and then with control, we're going to step your right foot to your right thumb. Keep your back heel high. In fact, slide that back leg back until you're on the pad of your left foot. So you're in this runner's lunge. Back knee is lifted. Engage your core. Squeeze your hips in towards one another. And we're going to come up into that high lunge. Crescent lunge. So pay attention to what your hips are doing here. You want your hips level, and then you want to tilt your pelvis underneath you. Pull that low belly in, sink into your lunge, and then extend your arms overhead and squeeze the imaginary object between your hands. Chin is level. Gaze is at something that is not moving, maybe something on the wall. So we're working here one day to have that right side parallel with the mat. So nice. Deep lunge, fire up that ujjayi breath. Take another inhale. Now listen, small range of motion here. We're just making little adjustments. Spin that back heel down. Reach your arms wide. Warrior two. So your right thigh is still parallel with the mat. You can try to stack your shoulders over your hips. Try not to let that left hip rise. Stay nice and deep in that lunge, and then if it's okay with your neck, your gaze, your drishti is over your right heel shoulder. Try not to let your belly just hang out here, so tuck that belly in. Try not to get too sassy in your back end. Tuck your booty underneath you, and then engage the muscles in your arms, so lifting the muscles to the bones. We're going to inhale, reach, flip, reverse. You can slide your left arm down that left thigh, or you can reach behind and push into the top of the right thigh, breathe. Another inhale. We're going to come into side angle as you exhale. So stay nice and low in that lunge. And then try to lift your heart up towards the ceiling. Your gaze is up beyond your left thumb if that feels okay with your neck. Your other option, of course, if that causes strain, you can have your gaze down or a more neutral gaze. Using that forearm to push your knee towards the wall if you need to. We're going to inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, cartwheel your hands all the way down to the mat. Keep your left toes curled under. We're going to push your left hand into the mat. We're going to step back and then find a side plank. Left hand is your base. You can take your side plank anywhere that you want. You can drop your left knee down and use it as a kickstand. If you like scissoring your legs or finding a tree leg, go for it. If you want to extend, bring that right arm overhead. I love side plank. I love all the planks. Let's take another breath. Coming back to your high plank. From your high plank, tuck your hips underneath you. Shift the weight forward. Chaturanga for three, two, one. Inhale, upward facing dog. Pausing to enjoy it. Push them out of way. Engage your core and your glutes. Squeeze those quads and then pull those hips back. Downward facing dog. 
Breathe in. And out. Inhale, bend your knees, look beyond your mat. Exhale, travel, step or float lightly. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Soften your knees, root down, rise all the way up, using that entire inhale to bring you up. And then exhale, back bend. Lift your heart, lift your gaze. Inhale, back up. Exhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. Maybe sinking into a little bit smaller chair than you were sitting in last time. Finding the arm variation that is appropriate for you. You can even airplane here. Or find a bind. Take another inhale. Forward fold as you exhale. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high plank. Shift the weight forward. Engage your core. Chaturanga for three, two, one. Finding your up dog. Breathing. Opening up the front side of your body. And then slowly, intentionally coming back to downward facing dog. And then breathe. Inhale, kick your left heel straight up, finding that height, lengthen, and then bend your knees, stack your hips, scorpion dog, try to shine your kneecap up towards the ceiling, balance the weight between your hands, keep pushing your chest back towards your standing leg. Inhale, straighten out your leg, square out your hips, lift, lengthen, shift into plank, Knee to nose. Inhale, left leg high, lift it all the way up. Take it to your left tricep. Inhale, left leg high, lift. Take it to the right. Inhale, left leg high, lengthen, lift. And then with control, step your left foot to your left thumb. Slide that right leg back, get a nice long stance here. You're high on the pad of your right foot. Feet are on train tracks, not on a tightrope, so hip width distance apart. Engage your core, squeeze your hips in, and then rise up. High lunge, that's a plunge. So sinking into some depth, allowing those shoulders to melt down and back, sending your thumbs towards the wall behind you if that feels okay. Your back leg does not have to be stick straight. I always have a little bit of a bend in that back knee. It's less these days than it used to be. It really depends on what's going on in your back. Fire up that breath. Take another inhale. As you exhale, spin your right heel down. Open up, warrior two. Keep tucking your hips underneath you. I feel like this is what I get for asking some for non-seated vinyasa. <laughs> Careful what you ask for, I got it. Plenty more now though. Okay, inhale. We're gonna reach, flip your left palm, reverse warrior, sliding that right hand way down your thigh, or maybe finding that half bind with your foot on the other side. Stay nice and low in your lunge, take another breath. And then exhale, side we go. Lifting your heart, lifting your gaze. Keeping your legs active, glutes are still active, maybe even Sweeping those heels in towards one another, lift your heart a lot. Inhale, reverse warrior without backing out of the lunge. Exhale, we're going to cart cartwheel your hands down to the mat. Bend up onto the pad of your right foot, and then we're going to go to the outside edge of your right foot. Side plank, right hand is your base. And then you're going to try to find the same variation here that you did on the other. Remember to keep lifting those hips, keep breathing, try to relax through your plate. One more breath in. As you exhale, high plank. We're going to shift the weight forward, chaturanga, for three, two, one. Inhale, upward facing dog. And then exhale, drop your knees, child's pose. Take a few breaths in your child's pose just to slow everything down. Come back to your intention and your dedication. Taking a few 
deep breaths of gratitude for the forces that allowed you to practice today, and this crazy world that we live in that allows us to connect with each other through our computer screens, our phones, our TVs, wherever you're watching this on. And then when you're ready, making this an active child's pose, so pushing your fingertips into the mat, almost like you have tennis balls underneath the palms of your hands, letting your arms lift, feeling that stretch through your triceps. Another breath. And then we're going to push your palms actively into the mat. Curl your toes under, downward facing dog. And then take your dog for a nice slow stroll, gently cuddling out those feet. Inhale, bend your knees beyond your mat. Exhale, travel step or lightly float. Inhale, halfway lift, finding that nice neutral spine, flaring those sit bones up, reaching the crown of your head forward, and then a nice deep forward fold. Inhale, sit your hips down and back, bring your hands to heart center, Utkatasana, chair pose. From your chair, we're going to twist to the right. So your elbow can come between your knees. You can even bring a block between your knees or a pillow, and you can rest your elbow on that block or pillow. Or that elbow can come all the way to the outside edge of your right knee. If you've been in my classes the last several weeks, then you know I'm loving this variation, making a fist with your bottom hand, pushing your top hand into the bottom hand. It really helps you lengthen through your spine and get a little more out of that twist. Maybe bringing your gaze up, keeping the weight in your heels so your toes are light and your belly is lifted, and then make sure you're dropping your hips lower than your heart. We're going to inhale back to heart center. And we're going to go right to the other side. Breathe, and twist, lengthen, sit, make a fist, and then twist a little bit more. If that right hip is really creeping forward, drag that right hip back a little. And keep your knees close to neutral. We're going to come back to center. Sit a little bit lower. Three more breaths in. And out for two. And out. You've got this. I'm watching. Breathe in. And then exhale slowly like you're not dying to get out of it. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands. High plank. Mula Bandha, pelvic floor engagement. Uddiyana Bandha, lifting that belly button. Shift the weight forward. Keep those hips tucked underneath your chaturanga for three, two, one. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Keeping it nice and active. Enjoying it. And then with control, with intention, downward facing dog. Finding some release through the whole back side of your body. The back side of your body represents your past. So just let it go. Shake it out a little. One more little flow with a little bit of balance, and we're going to slow it way down. Inhale, send your right leg high. Exhale, bend your knee. You can hang out here if you would like to lift your dog. Step your right foot to the outside edge of your mat. And then actively drive through those heels. Reach up and back. Maybe coming into your wheel. Ooh, almost did it. Fell on the mat. Lift dogs, come back over. Send your right leg high. And then we're going to step your right foot all the way to your right thumb. And rise up, crescent lunge, high lunge. <sighs> One of the things I say too much in class, probably, is anything is a balancing posture if you are trying hard enough, right? If you're engaging everything, if you're really intentional and you're really activating all the muscles, I can feel unsteady just in Tadasana, right? Same breath. So really activated. Fire up that breath. We're going to step up. And bring your left thigh up. And then breathe. Finding your drishti, your focal point. From here, we're going to come into airplane. So shining your heart forward. Reaching the back of your hands up. 
keeping that left heel hip height. Maybe transferring your drishti down to the mat. If you have a block, you grab it. We're going to come into our artist and draw some half moon. Finding that block out in front of you, pushing your right hand into the block. Try to stack your left hip on top of the right, reach up. You can stay right here. If you want to play around with your balance, you might challenge yourself by finding a bind, grabbing your back foot, kicking and breathing. You can bring your bottom hand to heart center if you would like any variation that you like here. If you have the bind, go ahead and release it. Woo. Finding your balance. Bend your right knee softly. We're going to land in warrior two. Stack your knee right over your ankle, reach your arms wide. Finding that drishti once more. Inhale, reach, flip, reverse. Take an inhale. We're going to revolve your side angle. So cartwheel your left hand down, spin your left heel up, reach your right arm up. Some bodies can keep that back heel grounded and they like that. If your heel does not like that or your ankle rather doesn't like that, let it spin up. That's fine. Little to no weight in this left hand. You can even use a block here if you want more lifting. You can drop your back knee down. If that's a little more, a little too intense for you today. And then squeeze your hips in. Take another breath. We're going to step the weight back into that right foot and find revolved Ardhashtrasana. So pushing your left hand into the block, lifting your left heel, hip height. And then trying to open your chest, maybe bringing your gaze towards the side wall. Take another breath. As you exhale, we're going to bring your hands down to the mat. Step your left leg way back. Step your right leg way back. High plank. Shift the weight forward. And chaturanga for three, two, one. Inhale, upward facing dog. And then exhale to downward facing dog. Breathe in. And out. Inhale, bend your knees, look beyond the mat. Exhale, travel step or lightly float to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, back bend. Inhale, up. Exhale, Utkatasana. Bring your hands to heart center. We're going to come to that twist, but we're going to start with the left. So bringing your right elbow to the outside of your left knee, maybe making that fist and twisting, or your other option, maybe opening your arms and flying. Whatever helps you to get the deepest in your twist. We're wringing out your body, moving lift through the lymphatic system. All great stuff for you, great for your immunity. Inhale back to heart center. Right to the other side. Finding the same variation here that we did on the other side. Take another breath. As you exhale, come back to center. Sit low. One more breath in. And then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, high plank. Find those bandhas, tuck your hips underneath you, shift the weight forward. And with all of your strength, we're going to lower just halfway, four, three, two, one, pause. Woo, inhale, upward facing dog or blue cobra. Exhale to downward facing dog. Almost there, one more side. Breathe in. And out. One more breath in. And out. Inhale, send your left leg high. Bend your knee, stack your hip. Stay here, or if you did so on the other side, both feet are number 11. You're going to drive through your heels, lift up. Flip dog. Not as deep on that side. That's okay. Put your hand, come back over, send your left leg.
leg high. Step your left foot to your left thumb. And then rise up. Crescent lunge. So sinking into that crescent lunge. Squaring, leveling your hips. Breathing. With control, we're going to shift the weight into your left foot. Stand up with your right knee up. Take another breath. As you exhale, airplane. Maybe finding that issue right away down on your mat. Go ahead and level out your hips. And then stack your hip. Open it up. Arch and drops in a half moon. See this on the other side. You can play around with your bind, using your props as desired. Coming back to your Ardhachidrasana. And then slowly bend that left knee, landing with ease. Warrior two, slide that right leg way back. Bend your left knee a lot. Inhale, reach, flip, reverse. Take another inhale. Revolve the Ardha Chandrasana as you exhale. Cartly your right hand down. Breathe. Bring your hips in. And then we're going to shift the weight into your left foot. Step up. Revolve the Ardha Chandrasana. So your right toes are pointing down towards the mat. Take another breath. As you exhale, we're going to step your right leg way back, plant your hands, step your left leg way back. Last one, here we go, shift the weight forward, chaturanga, four, three, two, one. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, drop your knees, child's pose. You can just a couple breaths here in your child's pose. We're going to slow everything way down. Just a little bit of a cool down in your final Shavasana. Take three breaths here. Nice and slow and intentional. And then push your palms down into the mat. Curl your toes under. Find your last downward facing dog of your practice. Maybe taking a breath or two in your last down dog to just notice how your body feels compared to your first down dog. Where is your mind now? Hopefully you're feeling calmer, more centered. Take a little walk between your hands. Take a seat. Seated separate like stretching. So you're going to send your legs Bottom of the mat out in front of you. And then we're going to send your right leg out off the mat. Bring the sole of your left foot into your right inner thigh. With your right peace fingers, grab for your right big toe. And then we're going to sweep your left arm up and over. Working to lift your heart up. Maybe lift your gaze up again if that's not appropriate for your neck. Your gaze can always be down or more neutral. Pin your left sit bone down. And there's lots of variations of this. Side stretch. For this one, keep your left arm long, so really active. Pin that left sit bone down and then try to lift that heart a little bit more to your last breath. And then we're just going to square your chest over your right thigh. If you want, you can bring a block beyond your foot. If you are feeling particularly flexible today, your other option, I really like this these days, is keeping your hands on the mat and walking your hands evenly. So the key is that evenly. It's going to be a lot easier for you to get your foot with your right hand and your left. So really focusing on that left, pushing that left sit bone down, keeping your heart pulling towards your big toe so your back is as flat as you can get it. And then rise up. We're going to switch out your feet. So your left leg goes long. The sole of your right foot comes into your left inner thigh. You're going to take your left peace fingers. You're going to dive for your left big toe if you can get it. You can also just rest it on your shin. And then your elbow comes to the inside of your knee. Sweep your right arm up and over. Pin your right sit bone down. Lengthen out through that right middle finger. And then bring your gaze where is appropriate for you. But even if your gaze is 
down, you're still thinking about lifting your heart up. You can think of sending that thumb, your right thumb, towards the wall. Last breath, really lift up. And then as you exhale, we're going to square your heart to your left thigh. And then walking your hand, grabbing your foot, your block, using a towel or strap, whatever works. And again, always just kind of taking note of any asymmetry. So if one side feels more open than the other, that is an invitation to focus on the side where you are more challenged for an extra breath or two. And then we're going to rise up. One more little seated forward fold, feeling all the fleshy good stuff out from underneath you. Just like to say thank your mama for her good home cooking. Rise up with a nice flat back. And then exhale forward fold. Try to keep your back as flat as you can. Soften your knees as much as you like. I can keep my legs fixed right here. I get a better stretch if I have a little bit of a bend in my knees because I can really tilt those sit bones behind me. Behind me. So, Play around with that. Don't let your ego get in the way of your practice. The goal is not for you to look like your neighbor, right? You might be by yourself, but you know what I'm talking about. It's not to look like anybody else. It's to be your practice. So find the stretch that feels good. And then we're going to rise up. And then flip your palms up and roll all the way down onto your back. And this is your final Shavasana. Encourage you to get comfortable here. Hopefully, you have three, five, maybe even ten minutes. How luxurious to just be here on your own. Let your breath resume its natural state of breathing in and breathing out. As long as you remember to exhale, your body will know to inhale. I hope that you guys are enjoying these videos that we are trying to create for you. We miss you guys terribly, so it's lovely to feel like we're connecting with you in some way. Hang in there. The light and the teacher in me sees honors and bows down to the light and the teacher in each and every one of you. Go in love and light and peace and health. From the bottom of my heart to all of yours, namaste.